corporate structuring for maximum capital and asset protection. How can we do it? How can we simplify this? Well, let's jump in now and I'll give you one of my case studies of how I structured uh, one of the corporate transactions. This was a, a LO bimbo, a lease option, buy-in management buyout. Let's how we structured this for maximum asset protection for myself and the tenant as well for two things, asset protection, income protection. We're gonna go through uh, a, a real life kind of structure that I put in place for, for one of my deals and it was the bimbo. Uh, the one in Paisley, 11,000 square foot. I don't know if you can remember, but there's three stories. We have uh, snooker upstairs on the second floor, American pool, English pool on the first floor, a uh, big cafe on the ground and a, a game center, fun game center and a, and a gaming, hard gaming center. Um, so all those different income streams on that one business, but really to protect the asset, the property, and also protect uh, all the equipment in there. I put a structure in place that protected my asset, my income, but I also then put my shoes in the tenants and thought how best to protect their assets and income should something happen in the future. Because as we'll just find out, um, within the first five years, according to the SBA, 50% of all businesses fail. So if something's gonna happen, assume it does happen, and let's build in golden parachutes where we can, which are very, very simple asset protection structures. And they most importantly separate um, your assets from liabilities as long as you have a legal, a legal arm's length commercial agreement between the two entities, yeah? And this is a real life kind of case study that I, I did myself. Um, it's live today and you can go and visit. It's physical, title deeds are in a company we own. And um, so this is how this one worked. We've got a, a company here and so a limited company that owns a property, a single property. It's a, there's no VAT, it's not VAT elected. The reason I set up a new company for this is the tenant couldn't claim back the VAT on his income as sales. And so I set up another company and before I bought the property, um, made sure that, you know, we didn't register at VAT, we, um, we didn't elect, uh, it's not opted to tax. Therefore, when I charge rent, I don't need to charge VAT on top of the rent, which doesn't hurt the tenant because his rent is 36K. If I, you know, if this company was VAT registered and we elected to tax the property, then that would be 36K times 20%, you know, 1.2. So it'd be another um, 7,200 on top of his 36K for no reason at all and he can't claim it back. So that's why we did that. Um, so that's kind of important uh, point number one. Um, what we also did is all the, um, the movable assets within this business. So we're talking about cafe equipment, um, snooker tables, Lord knows how many. Um, what, what else have we got? We've got pool tables. Um, We've got counting machines. What else is Changes. in there? Counting machines, chain machines, loads and loads of machines, lots and lots of movable equipment that can be pointed by sheriff's officers or it could potentially be stolen or taken or, or whatever. So we have them all in a list. So it's an, we have an asset list that we basically, um, so we have an asset list. We have uh, all the serial numbers on there. Um, we have make uh, the model, you know, who the supplier was, and there's a capital value on all this equipment. And then there's a lease drawn up. So this uh, tenant is here, and this is the tenant's, this is how I structured him, tenant's asset company. So we have a lease for the, for the property. He pays rent. And we also have a lease here for the equipment. And he pays rent. So everything's going swimmingly well so far. <laughs> and what are, what are his assets? You know, in the tenant's company, what, what are his assets? And this is really all about protecting 
If I protect him, I'm kind of protecting myself, my own asset and income. His assets are basically, you know, the lease times two. He's got a, a gaming license, a gaming certificate that are very hard to achieve um, and take months and cost a lot of money. Uh, so that needs to be kept in there. Uh, so a lease to the property company and a lease to the asset holding company. And uh, what else potentially in there? Well, let's just leave it at that just now because what we then do is we then help the tenant set up a tenant trading company. Now, why is this? Back to the SBA. You know, 50% of all businesses fail within the first five years. This is this chap's first business. And, it, you know, he's worked with me for 13 years. He's been a manager of mine for 13 years. So I want to kind of look after him. I want to uh, look after him means I'm looking after myself as well. But I really want to look after the guy. And I know he'll hit us road bump at some point down the road. And I just want to make sure we have a golden parachute in place. So this in here is the staff. You know, customers, so any insurance claims are all held in here. And we also have the trade. So his business, the five streams of income that he has comes into this uh, trading company. And then he has a sublease that allows him to